Hello, everybody. Um, I think over the last 30 minutes or so, you've heard from David talking about the work of the FIDO Alliance in the space of IoT, and you've heard from Rolf talking specifically about the importance of security within the world of the IoT. And obviously, there are many potential issues regarding security that need to be comprehended. But one that I'd like to talk about is really the onboarding challenge and the work that FIDO has been doing over the last two, three years to really address that onboarding uh, challenge with FDO. And so I'll step through over the next 20 minutes talking about the technology, giving you a, a high level look at how it works. And then we'll move on to Jeff Cooper that will do a deep dive on the underlying technology and the standard itself. So with that, what is onboarding? Well, it's really a process by which a device can establish a trusted connection with a service or platform. So that's what we're trying to do here. We have an IoT device, it's going to connect to a platform or service, and we just need to be sure that everyone in that equation is who they say they are. Is the device talking to the platform that it thinks it's talking to? And is the platform talking to the device that it thinks it's talking to? So we really need to make sure that both sides of that equation equation are true. In terms of the onboard itself, you're usually onboarding it to something, and that something can vary on your application. It could be a classically a device management system that you're using to keep track of everything. It could be an operating system provisioning system, or it could be an orchestration cluster. And so you can use uh, FDO to onboard to a multitude of different things, if you like, or platforms. When you look at addressing the challenge of onboarding, it actually, within the world of IoT, it has some very specific challenges that need to be thought through. Firstly, a lot of uh, IoT devices just don't have displays. So whereas if you're dealing with a phone or a laptop or, or other kind of uh, device that has a display, obviously there's a certain path you can take. In the case of IoT, often as not, your device will not have a display. There's an incredibly diverse range of products, both in terms of hardware and the operating systems that they run that need to be comprehended. Connectivity can vary greatly. Of course, it can be wired, it can be wireless, and within wireless, there can be a, a fairly broad range of uh, different technologies that need to be comprehended as well. So when you look at the, the, the challenge of automating that onboarding process and doing it in a secure fashion, there was a lot of things that the FIDO Alliance had to think about. Now, right now, clearly people in general are using uh, manual methods to onboard. And so if you look at the world today, it's not that there aren't solutions for onboarding, but they really don't fully meet the needs of the market. So number one, manual onboarding, by definition, it's slow. Uh, it's insecure because the person doing the onboarding, although you may trust them to be in that physical environment, you may not potentially want them to have access to all the credentials because for obvious reasons, they may, may work for your company today or be subcontracted for a company today. And a year from now, who knows who they work for? Maybe they misplace those credentials. So if you can take the human out of that, that's certainly something that improves the security here. And obviously, a statement of the obvious, if you have someone installing something, and what we've seen is that process could be 20 minutes, it can be an hour. I've heard of companies talking about several hours. It's a very expensive process as well. So you're actually looking at a lot of cost associated with the manual approach. So slow, insecure, and expensive. Now, what about automated solutions? Well, there are automated solutions that are, quote, zero touch. The challenge is, is that most of them tend to either be linked to a particular cloud platform or they're linked to a particular silicon vendor. And so if you're someone who's building a solution that has to work on-premise, off-premise, work with a wide variety of cloud vendors, and of course, you may have a fairly wide range of silicon solutions, they don't really tick all the boxes. There is another shortcoming, which is the vast majority of them. Actually, you re require that you know at the point of manufacture or, or programming who you plan to onboard that device to. 
And that's fine if I'm building 100 devices and I know they're all going to go to a certain customer. But if I'm building, building a pool of devices and I don't know who's going to receive them, that's a challenge. And we'll come to that uh, in a moment and we'll talk about how FDO addresses that. So let's take a little look at the value proposition for FDO. The vision for FDO is fairly simple. I want to be able to drop ship my device to the installation location. I want to have a, an installer power it up, connect it to the network. And then everything else, all of the provisioning, the onboarding to the device management uh, system, I want that to happen in an automated, secure fashion. So what we're looking for is zero touch for the installer, number one. Two, it's got to fit with onboarding solution, uh, existing solutions. So maybe potentially you're onboarding to a cloud vendor, a CSP, and they already have some kind of mechanism. So having something that can dovetail with what they've got um, is an advantage. You don't, it doesn't force them to change the way they do things. Clearly, it needs to be fast and secure. And you'll hear us talk about a minute, but in reality, it very much depends on the CPU and other factors. But again, quick. Hardware flexibility, as I mentioned earlier, we're looking for something that can run on anything from a small microcontroller all the way up to Xeon class processors. And in uh, with FDO, we can achieve that. On-premise and internet-based uh, onboarding is also important. Many customers in the world of industrial really don't want to have data leaving the facility. And so having a, a technology that can do on-premise onboarding is critically important. Obviously, for other folk, having a system that connects to the internet is not just perfectly acceptable, but highly desirable. Late binding, I'll spend a minute on in a second, but that's really about the ability to have one device SKU with one device set up in terms of its software and be able to onboard it to a wide range of different platforms. And we'll, as I said, we'll touch on that on a second. Clearly, having an industry standard is what FIDO Alliance is all about. And that's, I think, for many folks, something that's been missing. They've been looking for an industry standard. And then the last point, <clears throat> Clearly, there's an implementation side to this equation. <clears throat> Excuse me. Having the specification is a, a big step in the right direction, but that kind of leaves quite a lot of work open to the customer or partner in terms of implementation. And so with the FIDO Alliance, we've actually gone a step further. We've been working with Linux Foundation Edge, and they have a project up and running, actually executing an open source implementation of the FDO specification. So you get both the specification and an implementation, an open source implementation. I'm not going to spend much time here, but I think David covered this. I think the beauty of the FIDO Alliance and why it's been a great place to drive this standard is just the breadth and depth of the, the members that we have here. And many of those folk came from the original work that FIDO is doing. Uh, but in recent times, we're seeing people join the organization specifically to get more involved with the work that we're doing in the IoT space. And again, um, having a group that has a track record of establishing standards and doing it in a timely fashion is important. I think this is a problem that needed to get solved. And FIDO has a track record of actually making it happen in the industry. And that's, I think, important to many people because within the world of IoT and certainly the area I spend time on, which is industrial, there's a vacuum that really needed to be filled. So where are we? Just kind of a little bit of history and I won't dwell too much. The first time that the IoT working group got together was in the summer of 2019. And what was great is that the folk that came to the room came with about 45 different use cases. And we grouped those use cases to kind of see what was common. And there was a lot of communality. Um, the one thing that we decided very early on is that the primary use case we were going to focus on was the onboarding of devices, number one, but also we were going to focus on what we call the untrusted model, which, as I mentioned earlier, is where I say that the person who's doing the installation, I don't really want them to have access to the credentials. I trust them to be in the area. I don't necessarily want them to have all of the credentials. So we call that the untrusted model. Obviously, if I'm installing in my own personal home, I trust me, therefore I'm a trusted installer model. 
One decision that was made early on was not to start with a white sheet of paper, but actually to look at what work had been done already. And Intel had been doing work for several years on something called SDO, Secure Device Onboard. Intel offered that standard and that specification to the FIDO Alliance, and it was accepted by uh, the board and the steering group to use as the foundation. We got the first specification out in the spring of 2021. And as I would say to many, it was really, even though it's a 1.0 and in reality, it learned so much from SDO that I kind of in many ways think of it almost as a 2.0 because we had a lot of learning lessons that we could apply. We did a pre-interop event at the back end of October. We found a couple of small issues on the interop. And it was very, uh, I think, an excellent event. Red Hat had brought an implementation they had done. We compared it to the Linux Foundation open version, compared the two solutions, and we found a couple of small issues. And then based upon that learning, we did an update, the 1.1 specification in the spring of 2021. And I think if you glance at who are the major contributors, you can see that they really are kind of the who's who of folk in the cloud and silicon industry. So I think we had a great contribution there. I mentioned this already, so I won't dwell on it more. Um, if you want to get the download of the software implementation, it's there on Linux Foundation Edge. The version 1.1 production release is up there for you know freely available for download. One thing you may spot is the project still called Secure Device Onboard. That will change. And if you look at that little bullet at the bottom, it will be officially changed to FIDO device on board FDO in the spring of next year. So in February, that project name will switch over. So uh, again, uh, sorry for any confusion, but trust me, it is one and the same thing. It is FDO. Everything you find there will be FDO related. We talked a little bit about the whole question of supply chain. And um, I credit this slide to Bill Curtis, who drew it actually about a year or two ago. And really, the point he was making here was it, it illustrating that before FDO, there were automated onboarding solutions, but they really all required that you program the device at manufacture or at some staging post based on which cloud you were going to onboard to and also which customer you were going to onboard to. So was it instantiation one, two, three, et cetera, which really means you're forced very much into a build to order model. Now, for some folk that may work fine, but uh, for other vendors, they would really much have, prefer to have a build to plan model whereby they can create an inventory of devices and ship a single SKU out to a variety of different customers and each one can onboard to their platform. And that's what FDO does. If you see it that very on the right hand bottom side of the slide, the late binding is that ability to choose at the point of installation, where do I want to onboard this device to? Do I want to onboard it to cloud one, cloud two? Maybe it's on-premise, maybe it's off-premise, maybe it's customer A, maybe it's customer B. All of those decisions you can make at that point of installation. You don't need to make it at the point of manufacture. So again, in terms of reducing friction in the supply chain, this is really a, a major advantage of the FDO approach. Now, Jeff is going to go into the operation in, in quite gruesome detail. So I'll, I'll kind of give you a flyover just to set the scene and we'll talk a bit about the moving pieces. So on the left-hand side, we're looking at the manufacturing here, where in this case, I'm showing an industrial PC, but obviously it could be any IoT device. And several things are gonna happen there. We have a manufacturing tool that effectively places credentials inside of the IoT device. And they can be stored, the FDO specifications, very flexible. You can store it in something like a TPM or a secure element. You can store it in a file system. That's your decision. Whoever's manufacturing or programming that device can make that call. That's number one that happens. Number two, we actually place the FDO agent in the device so that when it wakes up, it knows how to communicate an FDO. And the third thing we're going to do, which is very unique, if you like, to FDO, we're going to kind of create this proof of ownership, a digital proof of ownership. And that's that little yellow key you see there surrounded by the white circle. 
And that's we call that the ownership voucher. And it's really my proof that I own this device or whoever has that has the right to onboard the device. So it leaves the manufacturing facility. We have the device in the box. We have the ownership key. The ownership key and the device ship through the supply chain until at some point you're going to make the decision, hey, here we are. This is the day we want to onboard the device. The first thing we need to do is to register the ownership key with the platform that we plan to onboard to. So maybe it's a cloud, maybe it's an on-premise server. So we reach out and we say, hey, this is the ownership voucher. I'm going to be onboarding this device in the future. It could be in a minute, it could be in an hour, it could be in a day, it could be in a week or a month, but I'm gonna onboard this device. I would like to prepare you for it. The ownership, the owner at that point says, okay, I'm going to take that and I will register it with this rendezvous server, which is the white circle you see with the gears on the right hand side. And the, the, the rendezvous server really acts somewhat like a kind of a redirect, a somewhat like a DNS. So the, at this point, it's sitting there waiting for that call from the device to say, hey, I'm alive. An installer comes along, they plug in the IoT device, and at manufacturer, it basically has a number of URLs where it's going to call home and say, hey, I'm going to identify myself. I've got credentials stored inside me that were placed there at manufacturer. This is my proof that who I am. And it goes up to the rendezvous server and kind of says, look, this is who I am. Who, who should I onboard to? The, the rendezvous server does kind of a redirect over to the owner and says, I think it's this owner over here. At this point, we haven't established any trust. We're merely saying we believe that this owner, owner on the left hand side is the rightful platform you should be onboarding to. We're not at that point proving that point. So now the rendezvous kind of steps out. It's done its job. It's redirected. Now we're starting this proper communication where we're mutually authenticating between the device itself and the owner. And the two pieces of the equation, the device has those credentials that were programmed in at manufacture, so it can prove who it is. The owner has the ownership voucher, so it can prove to the device who it is, that it is its rightful owner. And by doing that, the two of them can mutually authenticate and we can now secure a connection. And after that, it's really up to you what you do. You can download, obviously, the credentials for the device so that you can onboard it to the platform. Maybe you download an agent, you're going to go on to CSP vendor A, and you want to put their cloud agent, you can do that. So there's a lot of flexibility. Once you've done that, FDO has done its job. At that point, it can basically shut down and stay dormant for the rest of the life of the product or until someone decides to sell it or use it somewhere else in the facility. So again, Jeff will go through that in more detail, so I, I won't you know, belabor it. That was just a kind of a flyover. In terms of the software, I'm going to show this because I think it sometimes helps people uh, get a, a feeling of uh, really the differing moving pieces. So if we kind of step through number one through five, number one, there is a client piece of software that actually sits upon the device that you want to onboard. Whatever processor you have, whether it's an ARM or an Intel or another processor, maybe you're using a TPM or a secure element, that agent, if you like, can or client can reside upon that device. So that's one piece of the puzzle. Number two, we talked about the manufacturing tool. And this is really about creating that ownership voucher. It's about putting the credentials into the device at the point of manufacture or at the point of programmation. Maybe it's a VAR or distributor that does this. It doesn't have to be the manufacturer. That's kind of can be decided. We've obviously got the rendezvous server where we talk about the redirect. And again, this is a, a low compute platform. One thing to stress, some people ask, well, hey, you know, what, what, what kind of level of compute do I have here? Do I, do I have to think about throughput? In reality, um, it doesn't need a lot of horsepower and you can, uh, you know, we do demonstrations running on really small IPCs to, to prove it, but there's really not a lot of high level compute because it's really just doing this redirect. And then, of course, you've obviously got the owner itself, the platform that you're going to onboard to. The one element I did not mention earlier is that in the supply chain, you may have multiple people. 
and the FDO specification provides the capability for them to take the ownership voucher when they take ownership of the box, extend the ownership voucher and pass it to the next person in line. So they're basically signing it, passing it on, signing it, passing it on. Um, I kind of think of it a little bit like those Russian dolls, you know, how they kind of nest within a nest. So again, we won't go into great detail, but this really just provides you with a, a written summary of what those pieces of the puzzle are, whether it's the SDK, the client that runs on the device, that manufacturing tool that we talked about, the reseller tool where you're gonna ship it through the supply chain, the rendezvous for doing the redirect and the owner, which is where you're really gonna do the final onboarding to, you know, what, where is it gonna end? So I think we're kind of coming to the end of uh, our 20 minutes. So where are we today? FIDO FDO, it's an industry standard now to really address the challenge of onboarding, whether it's industrial, whether it's enterprise, whether it's medical, a multitude of applications it can be used for. Of course, it can be used for consumer as well. What it really brings is the level of security in that, unlike many onboarding systems, not only is it on board, is it automated, but we're now looking at both sides of the equation being um, verified. The device itself, that it should be onboarded, and that the cloud that it's onboarding or the platform that it's onboarding to is also uh, is a valid platform. And so that way um, you can have confidence that when you make the onboarding process, that there's no chance that if there's been some kind of interference in the supply chain, that potentially you could be on the boarding a road device. And again, Jeff will go through that in some detail, but that's one of the big advantages with FDO is it gives you far more resilience uh, to potential attacks versus many other potential solutions. What we've done is built on a lot of work others have done before. So we didn't start with a white sheet of paper. As I mentioned, we wanted something that really scaled across a wide range of processors and a wide range of operating systems. Maybe you're using a, an RTOS, maybe you're using Linux, maybe you're using Windows. Any of those operating systems are potentials that you can use with FDO. So a lot of flexibility on the software and the hardware side. As I mentioned, not only do we have the specification, which is out there now and you can, and you can download it, but there is an open source uh, implementation within Linux Foundation Edge. As I mentioned, it's called SDO. You'll soon saying it, see the name change to FDO, but you can download it and start getting your hands dirty, trying it in your own facility, um, going through some experiments to see if it works for you. And at the very end, um, I haven't talked much about adoption in the industry, but you know, let me be clear, we've got a lot of folk now really starting to get uh, committed to this technology, whether they're OEMs building products themselves that they plan to sell into these sectors and want to have confidence that their customers or system integrators can readily onboard uh, their products, whether it's ODMs, independent software vendors, um, and then, of course, end users. We've got companies that are uh, themselves saying, look, this is a technology that we think solves our problem. And then they're looking to their suppliers, whether it's OEMs and ODMs, and saying, we really want you to adopt FDO. Uh, this is how we plan to build our factories of the future or our facilities of the future. And we really want to see that you can offer this as a capability. So that whole supply chain now is, I think, really waking up to the value that FDO can bring. So I think that's about 20 minutes. I'll stop sharing there. And I think we're going to move over to Jeff.